Hey. What? Hey. Why are you so important to Marlene? Don't lie to me, or we'll take you back. You take me back, you don't get your battery. <laughs> you heard that? Give me my knife. What do you need a car battery for? And to answer your question, I need it for a better reason than you do. No offense, but Tommy's just one man. You get her there safely, and they'll give you what you need. Not just a battery, the whole thing. Fueled up truck, guns, supplies, all of it. You heard that? Not just a battery, the whole thing. Fueled up truck. You heard that? <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar, I'm Jed Morgan, a new episode in the generic zombie show known as The Last of Us, episode 2, The Infected, came out this week, and it really is just the generic zombie show. It's not really offering anything of value, and it comes across as incredibly CW. In fact, I think that's offensive to CW, because at least when they do their walking and talking, hallway talks or whatnot, there's actually something being said, whereas 90% of the conversations featured in this episode had no point whatsoever besides cheap exposition or just dragging out the runtime. And the runtime is actually one of the few brief respites that we get in this episode. The one saving grace in it is that it was significantly shorter than the first episode. That's the major positive with Infected because so much talking is done, yet nothing is said. That is some really horrific dialogue, character development, and just general world building. It's just really quite awful when you have it laid out like that. Nothing really occurs besides one good scene. There's one good scene in this entire episode. And funnily enough, it is once again a scene that features near no talking. So whenever the writing's not really involved and the actors aren't really involved, it's almost an okay show. But with the first episode, I said that it wasn't really bad or good. It was just kind of almost okay, almost okay. This one, I am very confident in saying that it is bad. This is a bad episode of television. I was bored throughout the entire thing because nothing was happening through the entire thing. And this one, there is no defense for the adaptations changes being made. It is not an accurate adaptation and there's not adaptation integrity anywhere to be seen. HBO needs to stop doing their behind the episodes, behind the scenes at the end of the episode because every single time, like with House of the Dragon, it devalued the episode once you find out what was inside the creators' heads. And in this one, it was no different with Craig Mazin and Neil Drunkman talking about all the changes they made and trying to justify those changes. This is barely, barely the same story as what was covered during the same period of time in the video game. The only thing is, oh, they end up at the Capitol building that, that's about all that's accurately adapted. Everything else is just really, really poorly done, poorly adapted, poorly written, poorly acted. I thought it was boring in episode one to watch Sarah walk around blank faced for 20 minutes just going through her daily life. This was so much worse because just watching three blank faced actors staring around at nothing and wandering around with no expression, that was far, far worse. I wanna get the positives out of the way real fast. The set design, the prosthetics were immaculate. Nothing to say against those. Some really well recreated sets from the video game. Some prosthetics on the zombies were perfect. I really don't have much to say against the technical side of this episode. And it's mainly what I'm gonna give it points for when it comes to rating this. And we already know this from the trailer, so this isn't a spoiler, but the clicker fight, the clicker fight is that one good scene that I was talking about at the beginning. It is really, really good. It has some great action, some interesting decisions that are made, such as Joel trying to make a loud enough noise to distract the clickers long enough to go back to stealth. That worked really well. And again, it's a scene where there's not a whole lot of acting and there's zero talking. And that was the best part of it. And it was so cut down though that it happened in like 20 seconds. The whole clicker thing was like 20 seconds long. And that was the only good part of this entire episode, which was still a drag, a drag. But before I get any further, there will be spoilers ahead, so spoiler alert. Now, this episode has a beat fit at the beginning that I'll talk about in a minute, but the main main story is Joel, Ellie, and Tess. They're together. They walk away, talk about zombies occasionally, talk about, oh, uh, Joel is from Austin. Isn't that interesting, guys? Let's talk about this. 
and they find their way to the Capitol building where Tess dies, fortunately, and that's where the episode ends. That's really all that happens is walking and talking on the way to the Capitol building. And I'm so actually grateful that the initial rumors and reports that Tess was going to be in five episodes of the series were false. She luckily does die at the point where she needs to from the video game part. So that was great to see. But the manner of how she died, the changes they made to why and how she died were baffling. And it wasn't supported by an actress who doesn't know how to act. Talking about these three main characters, they were like the only people on screen besides the beginning part. They don't know how to act. Except for Ellie. She was the only one acting, and she was acting like a bitch the whole time. Tess was also bitchy a lot of time, but more often than not, she was just blank-faced. Or ordering around Joel, and just really not being a real developed character. None of these characters are developed. Joel, he has no expression through the whole thing. Doesn't really make any decisions. He kind of pushes back against Tess a little bit. But as soon as Tess makes her decision... She makes the decision for him. Like at the beginning when they're talking about whether or not to take Ellie with them and to continue after they found out that she was a bit previously. He's like, no, 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 we shouldn't do it. And then she's like, we're going to do it. And he's like, okay. So yeah, he, he's just bossed around. He's, as as put it, Tess's dog. And blank face through the entire thing. Joel is horrifically bad. Ellie is just swearing all the time. There's none of the endearing factor that made the video game version of Ellie so compelling. It is evident, it is evident that she never interacted with the video game source material because she is not portraying that character in any way, shape, or form. She just was told, hey, she swears a lot and she's kind of yells sometimes. Oh, I'm gonna be an uber bitch, yay! But the beginning part that I mentioned that I want to briefly talk about is incredibly pointless. There's a 10 to 15 minute section at the beginning of the episode, which doesn't inform any decisions that the characters make, doesn't inform the world really that much. It is literally pointless. Now, with the beginning portion of episode one that had that little conversation between the scientists kind of introduced the cordyceps, that actually served a purpose. It just got the audience over the threshold to say, all right, this is how this could happen. And then we just need to see the actual events. That was fine. This was taking that same concept and dialing it up to 11 in a very unnecessary way. So this opening sequence was in Indonesia with the scientist who was brought into a lab and forced to inspect some cordyceps in a microscope and then goes on to autopsy a body. It's just this very long drawn out sequence of the scientist lady walking around slowly looking at things going, oh no, this is bad. This is really bad. There is a point later on when she does give it a good performance when she cries. There is a crying scene the scientist has, and that's a good piece of acting. The rest of it, she's blank faced as well. It's as if the showrunners were like, hey, um, you're acting too much. Let's stop that. You no need to act. It's as if that's what they told every single actor to do because no one knows how to act in this show. And at the end of it, the scientist tells the soldier man who's forcing her to inspect the cordyceps, hey, there's no hope. Just bomb the city. And that's it. Just side mission of Indonesia dealing with cordyceps back in 2003 and then jump back to the present. It was incredibly pointless. It doesn't set up anything that we didn't already know about the cordyceps. It did not form a single thing. It didn't add to the world building of zombies. We already knew how they were bit. We already knew about the tendrils. We already knew that there was no hope from the conversation with John Hanna in the first episode. It literally served no purpose whatsoever except to provide some gratuitous nudity that served no purpose as well. It was really just take that out. It's a normal 45 minute episode, 40 minute episode and would flow a lot better. There's no point to that intro or the origin whatsoever. In a story like this, an origin to the virus, the zombie apocalypse, the zombies, isn't that essential. I mean, it would be nice to know, but it's not something that you need to go out of your way to explain like this because this is a character driven story. It's not an overarching world type story like something like World War Z, for example, was. You need to you need to explain where it comes from in that one. In Last of Us, not necessarily just give the, enough of the basics so that you know how it kind of happened in the very, very basic sense of how the original game did it. With the worlds falling apart, it's based on fungus, you're good to go. This one, they're just trying to go out of their way to explain stuff that doesn't need to be explained and then doubling up on both episodes, explaining the same stuff over and over again to the point where it's just repetitive and pointless. Moving on, moving on. There's a really poorly acted conversation at the beginning of the episode that takes about 20 minutes it feels like between Ellie, Joel, and Tess where they decide whether or not they're going to take Ellie with them going forward after finding out she was infected. Just about a poor acting, Ellie yelling and swearing like a little bitch and she mentions that she knows that they want a battery and Tess is all surprised like oh you heard that we wanted a battery? Ooh, you sneaky little girl. Oh they're very talented but I actually went back and checked the first episode 
She was sitting on the floor next to Joel when Marlene mentioned, Hey, you if you help us, we won't just give you a battery. We'll give you the whole damn truck. She was literally right next to Joel. And Tess was looking at her during that whole conversation because Marlene was saying, Hey, take this kit and we'll give you the battery. Why is Tess surprised that Ellie knows they need a battery? She was literally right there. That is a small thing, small thing, but it is a sign of a greater issue with consistency and world building it's a plot hole it is a plot hole that Tess believes that Ellie wouldn't know that and there's a few other examples of it but that was the most egregious version of it there's just not a whole lot of consistency throughout this and then we just get some more walking some more exposition that we already know and it's just not very well done Tess does this little like oh we're bad guy speech so we don't care about you and it's just really overdone and Tess doesn't know how to act. All she knows how to do is scowl. She's like, I'm badass. Believe I'm badass or you're a bad person. That's all Tess knows how to do. And it comes off as frustrating a lot. And after a initial walking conversation where she's like, hey, uh, you went into the mall. You got bit there. Uh, did you go alone? And Elsie, like, yeah, I went alone into that mall. I'm never, everyone said not to go into. It's like, ooh, you've got balls, sister. And it's like a yes queen moment. It's like, no, you don't tell a 14 year old girl who went into a heavily infected area that she was warned about for no reason whatsoever besides curiosity. You don't call that person brave. You don't say they have balls. You're like, you're an idiot. You're really, really stupid. But Tess just wanted the, yes, sister. And it was really off-putting in the middle of everything that's going on. You're in the middle of a very infected zone. You could die at any moment. And you decide, let's have a yes, queen moment. It was very distracting, off-putting, and ground whatever momentum the story had going for it to a screeching, screeching halt. And it leads to another expositional scene where you finally get Joel and Ellie alone for the very first time in the show where Tess has to like climb through some rubble to go around and open a door for them. They sit on the floor and Ellie's big question is like, oh, so where are you from? Texas. Oh, cool, cool. What about Tess? Oh, she's from Detroit. That's in Michigan. I know where Michigan is. I went to school and there's just a lot of pointless exposition. It doesn't develop their characters. It's or it's information that we already knew or didn't need to know, like with Tess coming from Detroit. We don't need to know that. It's relatively pointless. And that was their big bonding moment in the episode is, hey, you're from Texas. That's nice. And of course, Pedro Pascal doesn't, you know, act in the entire scene. He's just like, I'm from Texas. Blank face. There's so much blank face acting that really drives up the boring factor. If there were talented actors giving talented performances in this episode, it would help it a lot. It wouldn't help it completely because the writing is still very, very poor and not developing these characters whatsoever, but it would have helped. These actors are not doing a good job whatsoever. And later on, they climb up a little bit. They get on top of this hotel that they were at right there. And Ellie reacts to seeing the zombies before she can see the zombies. She has to step up onto a little, you know, stone ledge so that she can see over the edge of the building down where all the zombies are. From where she was standing, she could see the skyscrapers. She just couldn't see the ground whatsoever. It's not even close. It's not a matter of, you know, they might have, might have. No, 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 no. It was, there's no way. But she like goes pale and says, oh my god. But she couldn't see it. Another example of not paying attention to what's going on. The director is not talented. Neil Drunkman is not a talented television director in this episode. Everything that was of worth was the technical stuff that he didn't really have a say in, or they hired at least people that were competent enough. And it was just very off-putting in that little interaction. And this is when we find out about the hive mind. The hive mind is one of the most generic and overused tropes in sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. There are a few examples of it being done right, but it's usually those examples are usually so far in the past that it was before it was really a trope. Now it's just, oh yeah, um, monsters, let's make it a hive mind. And we find out that the tendrils are all connected. So if you step on a zombie, kill a zombie, any zombies within a close region will know that that zombie died and rush in to attack whoever killed the zombie. That is ridiculous. And they try to explain it away using the, the tree communication thing that I've heard about at the end of the episode and behind the scenes, but it's not a good enough ex explanation for why zombies can communicate over miles and miles of distance. It's really, really dumb. And this is what they, you know, got rid of spores for. And the behind the scenes at the end, the director's like, yeah, the spores don't make sense. So we decided to do stupid tendrils instead. And there was a few examples of that, like at the end when they changed it from the military coming for Tess and killing her 
versus the zombies like it was in the show. They're just like, oh yeah, we didn't like it, so we changed it. They don't actually care about the source material. They had a relatively about 50% accurate first episode. The second episode is not even close. I'd give it a 20% accuracy, if anything, and that's mainly because of the set production. The set design is very close to it, and that's about it. But everything to do with the development of the zombies, the explanation of how they come about and whatnot from the flashbacks to 2003 and the 60s from the last two episodes, and the whole hive mind tendril spaghetti out of the mouth thing, is really dumb and makes less sense than the spores did because he the director's like oh yeah spores they go like everywhere and then everyone would be infected and it don't make no sense well it does because fungus really have very specific light conditions that make sense zombies unless they're like a very new walker type runner type zombies they try to stay indoors in the dark because fungus don't usually like a whole lot of direct sunlight it is explained in the games why like you only find clickers and bloaters in very dark environments and that's why you only see spores in those environments as well it is explained so he doesn't bother to do the research to find out why spores actually do make sense and instead comes up with this nonsense about zombies being able to communicate over up to 10 mile distance it's incredibly ridiculous but we move on past the zombie development and we get the scene after tess has been bit we find out later they're on top of the museum after the clicker scene which was good and joel's trying to wrap up tess's broken ankle or sprayed ankle and she just starts scolding him and it's like no let me do it. Mm, you can't be hopeful about anything you're just a piece of shit like i hate it's like really aggressive scolding towards joel it doesn't seem like they have a relationship in the games that kind of hinted at that they have a relationship but it's never set out right the show has made it explicit yes they're sleeping together they have a relationship but the way that they talk to each other I think that either Tess had to be his boss and Joel was obligated to follow her, that he's a simp, or that they have nothing to do with each other and they hate each other because the way that Tess treats Joel is horrifically awful. They have no chemistry and whenever Tess is acting, she's acting like a bitch. And so there's no reason why these two should be friends, let alone lovers. It's really ridiculous and no more apparent that Tess is a bad actress than when she's scolding Joel for just trying to help. At that point, he hasn't said anything. He's like, all right, we'll get your ankle. We'll keep moving. He was kind of on mission, on focus. But she's like, oh, you need to be more positive. Be more positive like me. You see the scowl on my face? This is a positive scowl. I'm happy mad. And it's just like, dude, chill out. He's not doing a facial expression. Uh, I don't know if you're supposed to be reacting to him being mean in the script, because Pedro's not acting mean, but wow, wow, it was really, really bad. And then luckily we get to the, the Capitol building and Tess reveals that she's bit, all the fireflies are dead, and it's kind of like the end of the line for Tess, but she's like, no, Joel, you have to keep going for it. I'm telling you to keep going, and it's not very well done. But they decide to have a zombie randomly pop up and start attacking them, even though it decided not to, for the first 20 minutes of their conversation in the Capitol building that was relatively pointless up until the revelation that Tess was bitten. And Joel kills it, rightfully so. But then the tendrils start shaking, and it's like, oh my god, the horde is coming for us! Oh my god, this is so stupid! And... Tess decides to make her last stand against the zombies by pouring out gasoline, throwing grenades on the floor, and she's going to blow up the building with as many zombies as she can. That is not as emotionally satisfying as the near pointless death that she had in the games. It is very specifically pointless because the Fedra, she doesn't delay them at all. And it's kind of heartbreaking about that, but no, she, she kills all the zombies. Yeah, yeah, she takes out a whole horde by herself in this big, badass moment, or at least it would be. And she eventually gets Joel and Ellie to leave because she orders him around. They run away. The zombies come in and they decided to go with these tendrils again over the biting. The biting was more interesting than tendrils being the main point of transmission. And the spores were even more interesting than that. But they went another step further. You know, in, instead of spores infecting people, instead of just bites infecting people at least, you can kiss a zombie and get infected. The... There's a zombie that walks up to Tess, the tendrils start coming out of his mouth, and they French kiss on the tendrils. And Tess just like lets it happen. She's like, oh yeah, uh, put those tendrils in my mouth, daddy. It is so awkward to watch because she's just standing there and she's like, yeah, stick it in my mouth. She even like hits her head to get into it. It's not like she just like is frozen trying not to get attention to herself. She's actively engaging in the kiss. 
with her eyes open, so it's not 100% engagement. And it's really awkward, and it's not made any better by the trope of your lighter not starting. She spends a lot of time trying to light that lighter, and after the kiss is in full swing, it finally lights up, she drops it, and blows up the building. It's so dumb. It is so dumb. That was a really, really big change that they made, and it was a really dumb change. Every single change that they made was dumb, and the character changes were the worst of them, but not quite as dumb. They're just non-entities. These characters are non-entities. And from what we saw the trailer for next week's episode, it will not be any more accurate. In fact, it'll be less because the boyfriend of Bill is alive and they've got this compound and they're going to be dealing with hunters and Bill is supposed to take Ellie off their hands, which is not the fact in the game. In the game, they just go to him to say, hey, do you have a car? Maybe we need some supplies. Let's get out of here. If Bill is just a staging ground. He's not a member of the Fireflies or someone who would take Ellie from Joel to keep going. That's what Tommy was supposed to be in the end. But now with Tommy is the ultimate goal for Joel going out west. It's all over the place. So yeah, episode three will not be accurate from what we know about it in any way, shape or form. They're just making it a gay spinoff primarily told through flashbacks that happened before Joel and Ellie get there. It's really, this show is generic at the very, very best. I don't understand how people can praise it. This was a bad episode of television. I'm very firmly on the line that this is a bad show and is only on track to get worse. You can, you know, put people in the right costumes, get some really incredible set design, some prosthetics, some really incredible technical stuff like that, right? And people will lap it up and say, this is the most accurate video game adaptation ever. This is the best adaptation ever. It's like, those are all superficial things. Yes, in the first episode, they got some superficial things, right? Yes, in this episode, they got a good fight with some clickers in. But the actual meat and potatoes of this story is the characters and the characters do not resemble themselves whatsoever. And now not even scenes are resembling the story, the source material at all. All you got is some costumes and some set design. That's all this episode had in common with the video games. It's not good. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's still not Rings of Power, Blood, Origin, or Willow bad. Not by any stretch of the imagination. It's still not good though. This was a bad episode. I am firmly at the, it's a barely a 3 out of 10. This is a barely a 3 out of 10 episode. And if it weren't for the channel, I'd be done watching it now because I don't like to see stuff that I love desecrated again and again by Hollywood. And Last of Us is one of my favorite games of all time with some of the greatest characters in video game history. I don't like seeing it desecrated like this, and especially not when everyone seems to think it's great. The Last of Us Episode 2 Infected is rife with tropes, genericness, some really terrible exposition, no character development whatsoever, no acting of any quality whatsoever, and some baffling changes, some really stupid stuff, like French kissing a zombie to get infected, and it's just the beginning. In the behind the scenes at the end, Craig and Neil take pleasure in talking about all the things that they changed and how they don't care about the source material. That has been their attitude throughout the entire thing. Neil Drunkman does not care about this game. He does not care about this show. He does not care. And this episode is proof of it because of all the stupid things that they changed, how unconnected to the game it is, and how dumb the hive mind is. I can't harp on that enough. The hive mind and French kiss are really, really, really dumb. If it weren't for that good clicker scene, I'd be getting this down to a 2 out of 10, but again, it is a roughly a 3 out of 10. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Anon. Hey, yo, are you feeling what I'm doing up in here? Oh, I know you are. Do you miss all the good, compelling stories that we used to get back in Hollywood that they ain't putting down no more? Oh, oh, I know you missing it. So check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern day mental illness issues, baby. Book one, Down in Flames. Book two, Apocalypse Then. These are currently on sale. What are you waiting for? Get your hands on them. And we got book three, Kill the Dark. It's coming down the pipeline. Just wait for all the good stuff that's dropping. You ain't gonna be disappointed, fam.